Hey, everybody, welcome back. I'm Emily Moyer, and this is a special presentation today. My good friend FPV Angel from APM Research is here. Believe it or not, it's been, I think, about two years since that epic show uh, we did last time, and um, a second one has been a long time coming, but life happens, and sometimes it's challenging, and I know you guys have been through some stuff, as have I, but Today, the time is finally right for us to come together again. So FPV Angel, welcome back. It's nice to have you here. Hello, Emily, and uh, thank you for having me back on. <laughs> I'm sorry, and I apologize for the other team that members not being available. But like you say, everyone's busy in life. And, you know, we've got actually about five members of our team have relocated homes. So, you know, they've, they've got that going on <laughs> for various yeah. reasons. Before uh, we... Before yeah, we so, so I'll, oh, ahead, I'll just say, you know, some of the things I talk about will be their research and some of it will be mine, no doubt, when we go through this. Absolutely. I, I always try to refer to you guys as a collective because I know that everybody plays their part and, and, and does a different thing and does it in their own way and it all comes together. You wouldn't be able to do it by yourself as, as brilliant as you are. Um, <laughs> I have to ask before we go any further, um, how is One Conscience and her daughter doing? I'm not hearing much of one at the moment. She's very busy with work and, you know, I, I know she's relocated for a reason. So I haven't pursued yeah. any, anything like that in case anyone asks me. Then, I, you know, I can say I don't know. <laughs> I honestly don't know because I'm trying not to know. OK, case, got it. You know, in case I mention things I'm not supposed to. Gotcha. Gotcha. No, no worries. I just I know that she that her daughter had had uh, some difficulties because she spoke about them publicly. So I just wanted to check yeah. in and say hello to her and them and hope that they're that they're doing well. So I did send her the link to the to the panel um, if she's free. You know, so it's just jump in straight away if you're available. So Absolutely. You never Perfect. know. She might pop in. She might not. All righty. <laughs> so how are things over where you are before we kind of get into the deep research? Um, just curious uh, what the, the temperature and I, I don't necessarily mean weather, but like what what is sort of the uh, the 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 vibe where you're at uh, currently? Um, with the ongoing current world events, uh, you know, you can see on these political channels, everyone's waking up to the lies and deception that they that they've realized, you know, that's just taken place over the last two years yeah and they probably and you know a good thing about that lockdown which is a bad thing but you know a good thing about it is people were stuck in the homes and they had nothing to do but look on the internet and that's when they see i noticed an increase in traffic when that yep. happened and that's a good thing you know it's always they're looking around looking for answers and they, you know they will find answers and it, well you've seen yourself a lot of these channels giving you those answers got banned so yeah i think people are waking up a bit quicker now yeah, it's it's uh the <laughs> it's gotten very cartoonish, right? When you look at yeah. at you know the behavior of system, like we're pretty much getting to the end of an Acme cartoon at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it is, isn't it? Right? Yeah. It's so obvious, isn't it? It's so obvious. I, I have to say, I don't often think of you in the same thought with like current political events, right? Like I see your your work on some levels is very separate from that, even though many of the world events are sort of the chaos to cover this, right? Yeah. But yep. oh, when yeah. I All saw connected. when I saw the logo for the Wagner group and how it mirrored your guys's logo if you look at it from a certain angle, like I think the there's a huge tell there as to what these um skirmishes and uh you know, sort of squabbles are really about, and it's never about anything that that we think it's about. It's about this technology. Yeah, yeah, they're just different factions um, that work for the same entity, but a lot of them probably don't realize they do. You know, so they've got a common enemy, or they're told they've got a common enemy, but you know, this entity is pulling both playing both sides. Yeah, it can, it's controlling. You know, it, the world is a stage, and everyone's its puppets. Basically, that's what's really going on. <laughs> uh, you Do know, you... to a certain certain level of top brass will know that, and then if you blow, that's probably guessing, like everyone else must be. Did you see the um? Did you see the logo for the Wagner Group? No, I haven't looked at it. No, <laughs> I go it on looks the, just uh, like your uh, the, the, looks like the logo you guys use, which told me that <gasps> no. this, this battle is really over an angel. It's not. It's not over what people think it's about. 
Yeah, you know, to me, wars are to hide what's taking place below. They know they need lots of bangs and booms and distraction and yeah, chaos. You know, to uh, achieve what they're doing below, they can't keep doing nuclear tests anymore, especially around populated cities, can they? You know, it's okay in the desert and other places where they were doing it, which yeah. to us anyway is then just blasting the way to the underworld using TNT or something. Yeah, uh, you know, they're blasting their way to the angel rooms as far as we're concerned. And it becomes more and more obvious that, and over time, you know, people pushing for peace, this, that, and the other. So all the nuclear testing stopped, although you think it stopped, but, you know, they're still doing stuff in other countries trying to get them on the nuclear table so they can go in and start taking over their technology under their feet. Yep. This is what's taking place. It's a massive, a, a, it's been a progressive takeover of nations uh, for probably 2,000 years or more now. Yeah, it's it's been going on for a long time, you know. So it's like, I'll give you an idea who the entity is behind it. <laughs> and this uh, and this entity comes in lots of flavors, and it's got many arms. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it'd be called one empire, then another empire, then another another empire. But it's always the same empire fighting for the same thing. Total yeah. domination and knowledge of this information and what lies below your feet. Yeah, so. I've been paying attention to your work now for, I think it's got to be four or five years. Um, and, you know, during that time, there's, before I was aware of your work, and then obviously the entire time that, that I've been paying attention, um, I go in and out in terms of like, you know, I've, I got a lot going on and I'm busy. So sometimes I'm paying attention a lot and other times I just pop in once in a while um, part of what I really like about it is it's a foundation that, that I can build my own, my own story and my own life on. And whether I check in once a week, once a month or once a year, like it doesn't, it, I can just pick back up where I left off. Right? Yeah. You can just keep adding more pieces or bring some that you found yourself and see where it plugs in. Yeah. It doesn't feel like a lot of other people in this space who do work on models or cosmologies or whatever it has more of the whiff of religion to me or some other type of movement where if you don't check in every day then you're missing the boat or you're getting behind <laughs> and and whatnot and though a lot of those have a lot of sort of movement or energy or in kind of hubbub around them like i i was not a person raised with religion and anything that even whiffs of that for me is like a no for a variety of reasons that doesn't mean it's not perfectly appropriate for someone else but for me it's not for me like i look for something that offers me a foundation of knowledge and skills upon which i can build at whatever time i choose to um, and, and it doesn't matter if I go back to it today, tomorrow, or next week, the work I've already done is there and I can continue to build my piece of art or whatever at the pace that, that feels right for me. And there is no falling behind or not keeping up with the Joneses, or I must consult you because you're the only one with the secret knowledge or the old book or whatever <laughs> it is. Right. Yeah. Um, so I've appreciated that. Like, I like when I have something that's a constant in my life and in the way that I'm building my stories without me feeling like I have to be adherent to it or a slave to it or, you know, something like that. So, so I thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, I, you sent me over as, as I was preparing, you sent me over uh, a couple of things that you um, thought were the most important for me to look at before we do this in terms of some newer decodes and ideas since our, our last time we got together um and when i watched them even though like i didn't i think i heard you use only use one of the words really once but um it was clear to me that you're you're really looking at the same things that that i am but from your unique vantage point um and for me like a lot of the other chaos of the world has kind of recessed into the background and what i've really been focused on kind of comes down to basically four things and and then there's subgroups within that and, and that is power genetics light and sound um and power in my case you know meaning um nuclear and i've 
obviously taken a look at fission and fusion, how they connect to particle accelerators or to the angels, what yeah. um, their connection is to DNA, um, and then how all of these things are are affected by or affect with light and sound. Um, and pretty much anything I'm paying attention to, like I'm looking at it through one or more of those lenses. And it's clear to me that like, that's, that's where you're at with, with what you're doing. You probably always have been, but like you become, you know, like the riffraff falls away, the better you get at this and it becomes more focused. And like, yeah. you have a three minute video that I think we can probably do a few hours on right now. And, and <laughs> I was excited to see that. So yeah. yeah. Well, so you know, that's uh, it shows you how unique your perspective is as well, Emily. You know, you've got the ability to just look into this and recognize what it is we're, we're telling you. A lot of people struggle with it, or, you know, I think they bring in uh, some religious bias or some other things with them, and they're looking for answers that they want. And the truth isn't, it doesn't always work like that, does it? You know, uh, you know, for their, for their benefit, what I'll do here is a quick decode of what's really taking place and, uh, roughly a few thousand years ago, anyway, we were invaded by the Romans. Uh, they invented religion. They personified the technology that our ancestors used to depict as the sacred geometry we see around the world right now. And they invented the kings or the royals to represent it and the priests to represent it. And in modern times, they invented the globe to hide how it works. Mm -hmm. So this is... Um, a lot of things people's going to have to consider. You know, we had to throw away everything we thought we knew when we started doing this. And when we started learning this and realizing how it really works, we think, wow, you can you, you get to understand now how all the tricks that they played to hide it from you. You know, I don't know if you listened to the Hunter and Chris interview we've done recently, but I elaborated a bit more in there about that, of, you know, how they take over these um, native tribes, lands, and install their system and bring their cult of religion that they've created with them to install it and vote them in. If that makes sense, this is what's really been taking place. You know, we've been forced to believe in this system. It's an imported belief system and um, alien to our land. Yeah. As from a Celtic viewpoint, you know, we were invaded. We were forced to believe in this religion. And it's just, it's gone from there. Is what I can see in my research, and I'm pretty sure all the other researchers in APM see it. You know, the, we can decode history. You know, the, the victors still are telling their story. So you can't believe any of it. You've seen what's been happening in the news. You can't believe any of it anymore. They've lied about everything. Even space, you know, you, you look. There's, 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 <laughs> Especially there's million, space. <laughs> there's, a, there's a million channels out there destroying all this. You know, we're showing you how it works and what the glory actually is and how to locate it locally. But all these other channels, you know, they're doing a fantastic work. The, the different aspects of the lie being exposed, which is brilliant. And there's millions of them doing it. You know, I couldn't name them all. But you only have to search it and you'll, you'll see people ripping it all apart. And we're just showing you why it needed ripped apart. Yeah. Um, I think that the for some reason and i don't know if the invaders knew this and took advantage of it or if that they just decided to do it and it worked magically so they kept doing it there seems to be some desire amongst humans amongst people for a collective story right like a collective story that tells you how to sort of make sense of everything in a linear progressive way and that to me is like what the religion all these religions which are really one right they all kind of have the same structure and and i count government in there i don't think there's any bigger religion than government right yeah and mm -hmm. what i find is is when you really begin to understand what this realm is and how it works, which is what your work is doing, then there isn't really a collective story. There could be a collective understanding of how it works, but understanding how it works is going to generate a unique story for each person. And people 
have to be okay with that, right? Like not yeah. everybody we're talk we're talking about here is energy and and genetics and and everybody's body, everybody's is different. The re- way people react to energy is different. And that means that even if we're standing in the same place at the same time, we may have a fully different experience of what it is that's happening. And for some reason, we don't feel okay in our, I, mean, I do, but a lot of people don't feel okay to just experience whatever it is they're experiencing without having to have it match up with what their thought leader or the person standing next to them or their mother or father or husband or wife or whatever thinks. Like to me, the more different stories we can tell and recognize that my story is just my story. And that doesn't mean that that is your story and you're entitled to yours. But the place we live sort of supports all of those different iterations of of reality if we have a common understanding of what the mechanism is and how it works and that's the one thing that's missing from all of these collective stories is any description of the mechanism and how it works yeah yeah you know they can't elaborate on it because they haven't done the research and discovered it is the the problem you can see how they're trying to work it out and you know like uh, Mauro Bellino um, the Vatican translator I've mentioned previously He's just released a book called, um, I forgot the name of it now, I mentioned it on Hunters and Chris's, um, The Gods of the Bible, I think it was called, because in, in the Bible it's actually plural. You know, he's telling you what he's, the, what he's translated from Old Testament, they're putting into the Bible as God, but he's telling you that the gods of the Old Testament is plural, and it's, it's talking about this technology. This is the creator gods of the underworld that our ancestors were teaching. So you know, it's, it falls into place so easy, doesn't it? When you when you get the right connections, or someone releases a bit of information. I mean, Morrow's a bit lost because he's still thinking he's on a globe and aliens involved. So the guy's kind of lost on you know what this technology is and where it fits in. But <laughs> you know, the globe's been debunked. And outer space aliens is just fantasy talk, and let's deal with the real world in question: what we're standing upon and how it works. Yeah, that's that's what it's really telling you about. This is what Old Testament really is. It's not it's not a religion. It's just general information on how, what this world is and how it works. That's yeah. what it's decoding as to me. Now, who wrote the original books? I have no idea, but it seems it's always been known in, in every culture. They just all have different names for it due to their different languages. And of course, you know, they'll tell the local story of the local hero, which, you know, it could be a local angel just down the road and He's he's going to be like famous in that area to people telling its story, but because they've been named, it's so easy. You know they've been personified, and then you put that in a book without any glyphs or anything to reference it with, and people immediately think it's talking about a person. person. You bring that person to a life, don't they? You do it yourself as when you read a book, you bring that person to life in that book, and yeah. that's what we've been doing for two thousand years. Well, since they started writing books. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> yeah so, you know, this is how they hid it but you know yeah. from my perspective you can go back to the glyphs and say well no this is how it was depicted you've put words to that but you've omitted the glyphs why have you omitted the glyphs that should accompany those words because that's how you hide it isn't it because the glyphs would show you it's not talking about a person yeah it's talking about something in the underworld yeah yeah no mm. i mean it's true that's you know i know some people like maybe think I'm silly when whatever it is I'm talking about, like I will start, I will be in the middle of the show. Some topic will come up. I will go to Google. I will Google whatever we're talking about. I will not look at anything in the, in the, the text or the stories. I will go straight to images, right. And look for something that resonates as something that I've seen before or something that I, that I understand. And it's amazing how how quickly I can get to the bottom of something by just looking at what something looks like rather than hearing what somebody has to say about it. Oh, perfect. Well, that's how I do it, uh, Emily. Yeah. I look at, you know, if someone's talking in a video that's got interesting uh, geometry and it's sacred geometry, uh, I'll mute the video because I'm not interested in what they think it is. I'll just look at it and decode <laughs> it with my own eyes. I'll say, well, yeah, you know, right. look at the title of the video and say, well, he's way off the mark. We know, we know they're all way off the mark. You know, that's not, that's not a, 
a poke at them or anything. They just haven't got to the point of level of research we're at to realise, you know, how it works. Because of Flat Earth, it's brought this team together to decode how it really works. And I think we've done a fantastic job over the years. Yeah. You know, the, the, the sad thing is, Emily, this is this community that we're supposed to be a part of, the, the, there's no mention of it anywhere. They don't share it. And, and you know, what we're finding is we're, we're finding these copy-based scammers keep stealing bits of it and trying to cash in on it and pretend they're decoding things. You know, I've had to highlight that a few times. People should be, you know, aware of these some of these channels. There's some, yeah. some really dodgy people out there and some dis very disingenuous and dishonest things going on. You know, you can't have, if you want a truth community, you've got to stamp that out quick. And that's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to highlight it and say, look, stop this. Yeah. This is yeah. far too important for this crap going on. They'll have to, you know, these guys look for fame and fortune or even adding dis disinformation to it. I have to treat them all as the same. You know, to me, they're going to be disinformation out to make a mess of this research or try and put people off looking at it. Yeah. It's, cha it's challenging. Like, this has been one of the, um, I don't know when, when you started, but like I started with this in 2016, right? And, mm -hmm. um, you know, in the beginning, it's all like sort of exciting and, and you know, there's like an, a naivete and an innocence and, and whatnot. And, and then as time goes on, you know, it, it, there are some challenges that come along in this space that, that are, um, you know, that start to wear on you. And sometimes it's some of the personalities and some of the just cycles of similar behaviors over and over again from, from different things. And, and, you know, I recognize there's a lot of like fatigue and frustration. And sometimes that leads people to do less than integrous things. Um, and I see the way that that plays out both amongst creators and followers. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, like it is, it is, um, it's a, it's a unique discipline of its own just to sort of like, okay, like that's kind of what's happening. Let's, we can see that. Let's acknowledge that, but let's, um, just return to the way we do our work. Right. And to be okay. Like I've just had to become okay with it that I'm for myself, like I'm not everyone's mm -hmm. cup of tea. Right. Um, and you know, I'm very, I'm always very clear with people that like, most of what I do is me search, right? Like I'm trying to figure out like what the fuck I'm doing here. And yeah. I don't pretend to um, have the, you know, like authority on, on what is true and what isn't. I just try to make sense of what I see in front of me. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I've looked at a lot of other stuff out there and um, some things out there are interesting, but after a while certain things just lose my interest and and I um I'm looking when I'm when I have an experience that feels unique to me when I say unique just like outside of my normal everyday whatever go to work interact with the people I know when when something anomalous happens or I have an observation or or a feeling or something you know whatever it is from from something small to like just a very crazy experience. Like I am trying to understand like what created that. And so when I go and look at the the people whose work I've watched over the years, I'm returning over and over to the ones whose work offers me tools to understand my life and myself. And, um, you know, like, and, not because I think my life and myself is any more important than anyone else. It's just the only one I can understand because it's happening to me. Right. Yeah. And so I need tools that are practical and, and, and the tools that don't come with this like enormous amount of story. I mean, you guys definitely offer some story, but it's really much more structure, right? It's really much more like a set of tools and yeah. like a little bit of an idea as to like why these tools are important and where they come from. Um, and then it's up and to me to decide what to do with them. And I like that. Yeah. And you can lab elaborate on them, on them yourself. You know, you can follow one of these avenues of research we've done and you'll come to the same conclusions once you see what we see. 
Yeah, you know, there's, there's no other way to really describe what it is, you know, because because it's such a lot of subjects we've covered due to, you know, we're, OK, we, we have to decode this world. <laughs> yeah. You know, I never thought I'd see myself ever doing something like this or, or presenting something like this to a world audience for that matter. But this is where we're at today. You know, we didn't expect to find what we found. Yeah. And it, and it just keeps on giving. You know, that's that's why you lose interest in, cha in channels, Emily, isn't it? You know, you, if they're not learning you anything or showing you anything new or or evidence-based research, you know, that's an important part. You know, what, what our research is evidence-based because we can highlight, you know, we can show you halos and things like this going on, rainbows that you can now map. Yeah. You know, there's, and, and, you know, people's testimonies of what they've seen themselves in, in areas and things, you know, it's it's something you can do yourself. And that's what's important about Operation Rainbow Warrior. It's so anyone anyone listening can go out there and start mapping their own rainbows and that, that should not start raising questions. Why, how can we keep seeing the same rainbow in the same place all the time? What's going on? <laughs> you know, it, it right. has to, you know, it's going to bring questions, isn't it? They're not random. <laughs> it's not caused by what they say. That just reveals what's already there. You know, the sun and the rain reveal something that's always there is what's really taking place. So we're about to jump into the, the the deep decodes and research here, but I want to ask you one question before we get started. Have you ever seen the television series Dark? Dark. Uh, it's a German television series. I don't think so. So the reason I'm asking you is because the way you started with, you know, the Romans invaded and brought religion and whatnot. And, and this this series is really interesting. It's it's a German series about um, a group of people, a group of kids, basically. Well, with just the people of a community where there's a nuclear reactor, right? Where there's mm -hmm. a nuclear energy plant, and basically um, a biblical story being told around it, and uh, it centers around one character who it, it takes a while to to realize that what you think are multiple characters are all the same person, right? But it's basically that <clears throat> one of them sort of figured out uh, some of the power that's really associated with nuclear energy, right? Or maybe mm -hmm. an angel. And um, rather than, and, 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 and sort of used that power to go about trying to arrange reality in a way that is preferable, you know, to him. Yeah. And it, it it's fascinating because they've even named some iterations of the characters, Adam and Eve and, and, you know, names from the Bible and whatnot. And you see how secret societies developed around this knowledge and from oh, yeah. these secret societies came religions but these religions were built around stories you had to tell individual actors in order to get them to do your bidding for you right yeah. and some of those characters were even themselves but they had gotten so lost that they didn't even recognize it right like <laughs> they right they were basically controlling younger versions of themselves and manipulating them yeah right and it's fascinating to watch two lodges develop, one run by Adam and one run by Eve, and mm. all and one of them is controlling time and the other is controlling sort of space or dimension, right? And <laughs> getting um, this group of kids, some of which included the earlier iterations of themselves, to sort of arrange time and space around them it's fascinating it, it and i think it 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 goes to this idea that you kind of started with when you just did the quick decode of religion i think you'd like it it's it's, it's a german show but at this point it's been dubbed in english so you don't have to read the subtitles yeah um it's it's pretty it's, <laughs> it's a pretty good show i've never heard of that one no but yeah it does sound interesting it actually sounds like it's been written uh, written by someone that knows how it works of I a hundred percent doesn't it? A hundred percent. You just couldn't pull that out of a hat, could you? <laughs> yeah. Well, let's uh, get, let's get know, into knowing it. what you know now. Let's, yeah, get, let's into get into it, it. because these these decodes that you 
that you sent me and no and, and sort of the way it was all organized so nicely in the story of dark it's exactly what you just said right like a, this person knows how it works and basically is telling the story of what is going on at, in communities that are around some of these locations of angels right um uh, all over the world but this was just the story of one of them right yeah. um so okay, do you want to start with the three minute video or the or, or the twenty one minute video? Where what would you like to do? I'll play the twenty one minute video and I'll mute it because it's got subtitles anyway. So I'll let it play with the subtitles. And if you want to, you know, discuss anything that's going through it, all right, uh, we can do that as it's playing. And any questions that you might have yourself, or even if any of your subscribers have given you any questions before on it, we can uh, all right. elaborate on that. Let's do this. All right. All right. Okie dokie. Now I have to find uh, the screen. <laughs> I got it right here. That's the one, yeah. All right. So here. just uh, mute it and mute let it, it play. And All right. that should do it, yeah. All right, here we go. Right. So I made this video here anyway to start highlighting Operation Rainbow Warrior. You know, we, we'd already discussed it before then, but this was, you know, some things had compiled together to focus it a bit more. Uh, so people could get the teeth into it and see, you know, some real world examples like Glastonbury Tor. Glastonbury Tor is not the only Tor in the world, by the way. There's many of them, so they're all going to map the same. <laughs> so, so Glastonbury Tor being a tower, but Tor also representing Taurus field, right? The energy field around the tower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Continuing. Yeah, so you know what's below Glastonbury Tor. Uh, if you if you watch the video, you can see where I've mapped it and added two halos, an Adam and Eve halo, a small halo, and a large halo, and it also decodes um, Excalibur and a few other things in the video. You know, there's <laughs> there's some massive decodes added into these videos, and that people probably won't get them straight away. They'll, they'll need to watch it a couple of times maybe to pick up on some of it. Can I ask you a question real fast? So I see you just said an Adam and an Eve halo. And then over here, it says Adam, Eve, the apple and the snake. Yep. Can you just mm -hmm. tell us which one, which, which for the people watching, which thing is which and, yeah, and why sure. you termed it that? Yeah. Right. So the, the large halo at the bottom, that's Eve. Okay. This one? Uh, or, or are we talking about here? This well, and any of the large ones is Eve. Okay. That's the female, right? Yep. So the snake on the right would be Eve, yep. the big one, and the small one would be Adam, and the same on the left. So you've got an Adam and Eve configuration here, and what the configuration relates to is the electrical flow of okay. the right-hand rule and the left-hand rule. Okay. Right, so you've got Adam and Eve, and they create, they create that scarab beetle shape, which is where that scarab beetle shape originates from. It's trying to show you this. It's this configuration it's talking about, and so is the, you know, the shape of Buddha. Yeah, uh, you know, there's a few shapes in the world you'll see, and they relate to this. It actually, looks like a human shape as well, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so so they're the physical ones in the underworld. The two at the bottom, they would okay. represent an angel room below. Okay. Now the two at the two above uh, electromagnetic projections, ninety degree in opposition. That's electricity. Ninety degrees in opposition to magnetism is how it works. So you, so you will have two halos or more, depends on how many you're connected to Eve. You know, you can get more than one connected to Eve. So there could be one there with two or even four on. Okay. We're going to start picking up these configurations as people start showing us the rainbow mapping. So, yeah, you know, the, the, this is the demiurge. The demiurge is the invisible thing we don't normally see in the sky. But that thing in the sky, that halo or halos, is what's responsible for the lunar wave. When the moon goes past in the background, it's highlighting there's something there in the foreground. And it's these halos it's highlighting. So there's a bit of visual evidence that would, you know, can give us a bit of backup on this theory. Just so, uh, just so you know, I, I always find this interesting. I've been meaning to tell you this for a long time. The uh, apartment building I live in, right? The mm -hmm. logo looks like eve that like the ring yeah. right it, it looks like that and and it is my uh feeling that like basically i'm living on top of one of these things um and i think it, it, I, and you've maybe heard me talk about this before but the company oracle is right next door um to where i live <laughs> right and um you know and i live directly across from a, a power plant that 
there's long been suspicion from people that there is there isn't a nuclear element there that it isn't just a regular standard power plant right Mm -hmm. um and that it's exactly opposite on the other side of the water so the colorado river in texas comes straight through austin and it's dammed into separate lakes so they call it um lady bird lake or it used to be called town lake but now they call it lady bird lake but it's really the river right and so it's interesting some of the things that are on each side of the river but I'll, I'll take a picture later of the logo at my apartment building. And to me, like it's the the tell and the give and probably also part of what attracted me to that apartment building, even though it was under my front awareness at the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're a subliminal yeah. uh, information coming in. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you could have glanced at it and not registered it, but it's too late. It's been recognized, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, here we go. Recognized. <laughs> oh, and uh, Adam and Eve, the apple and the snake, by the way. Adam, well, of course, like I said, Adam's the male halo, the small one. Eve's the bigger halo. The apple is the torus field they create, and the snake is the how it moves the ether, the electricity in the ether. Okay. So that's okay. the flow of electricity, the snake or the spiral. You know, it's a spiral, it's a sine wave. Do you this think... Is how, this is how it flows electric. Do you think those... Things that like, you know, when you see like the serpent mound, right? Where you have like those squiggly land formations and things like that. Are those um, sort of like a... A location marker. They're an effect of this, right? Laid out out sort of... um, Not an effect. No, someone's put it there to show you there's something marked there below. Okay, got it. It's playing a part in the construct. Okay, I got you. So it's not an effect of that vibration it's just a, a pointer it's a it's pointing you to that yeah yeah it's gotcha. more a okay. pointer. you know it looks like it's been constructed as a marker yeah okay to gotcha. me, you know but there will be natural things like you know you can like the tour you know that's something natural that's happened because that's in between two halos that's actually in the eye of the two halos where they overlap that's the desica pisces yep and that's okay. uh to me that would be it was caused it to raise up like that that's a special point, you know, and that's why it's, that's why the Vesica Pisces is special. It actually relates to creation. This is where creation's taking place in this technology. There's an interesting mound uh, here in Austin, right? That like a, a that looks sort of like the hill there. Um, that's interestingly located, you know. Like there's mm-hmm. no uh, it, it 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 all lines up, right? But there's this hill that even has like a spiral walkway to get to the top of it that sort of that looks remindful of. And then there's all of these <laughs> interesting areas around that are sort of like observation decks where one could keep an eye on that at all times. Right. It's amazing. It's amazing how, how much you see it now in their geometry and the gardening, isn't it? You know, yep. they've been portraying it forever and we have not really figured out what it relates to. You know, a lot of people call it satanic or whatever. They, that's just right. religious nonsense to keep you, stop you looking at it. Yep. Yeah. That's the scare you away from the truth, isn't it? Yeah. But All right. You, you know, yeah, carry on. Let's go. There you go. All right. Right. So what I'm you know, I'm just telling people here uh, the information, the fake it values, everything. Wow. Yeah. Okay. There's Buddha where he fits in and look, he's even got a rainbow round him. So it's all they're all personifications of the technology. That's what the world's gonna be have a probably a hard time uh coming to terms with they've been lied to you know a lot of these characters are people when they're actually technologies they might have been named after people we don't know you know the saints are clearly uh this technology all the saints male and female relate to this technology and and had location markers for it all your churches your cathedrals castles star forts the location markers from different ages and time marking these sites it goes back to celtic times and probably beyond there you know, that's uh, that's how we can decode it now. They're all just marked. They're all fighting over the same sites. It's not what's on the surface that's sacred. It's what's below those sites. So, uh, you know, a church or a cathedral is a, a modern-day sarcophagi, which represents a room below. And its design, its configuration, this is what Tartaria is all about, by the way. So I'm going to decode that for you right now. It's all about portraying how it works. In this geometry, that's what that's what the Tartarian. It's just another Roman Empire build, 
another arm of the Roman Empire taken over at some point in history and trying to install royals, which didn't go down very well for them in Russia, did it? But that's what was taking place then. And, you know, even in John D's time, you look at John D's time, you look at the, uh, which I forget which video it was now, I've done a decode, and it showed you, you know, the gates in the north, south, east and west, top-down view, and it was a nice coloured map. And what you can see on it is all the terminology that should be there had been changed into military designated wording, you know. So they've militarised the information. This is when it was a military takeover operation. Well, it always has been, but this is when your kings decided to build armies to represent the creator or God. You know, they've put God into the Bible. God's, God means light, light, electricity. That's the, the ultimate creation. Is the, the ultimate creator is God, electricity, light. Is, that, is it living? No idea. I don't think anyone can tell you what electricity is. Can, can, I, ask, can, I, ask, can I ask a question real fast? Yeah. The, the male and female dragon, right, as they yeah. are working their way across the screen, I'm going to go back just a tiny bit to where they sort of started and then they, you kind of zoomed in and right. But you can, you can see they, they look quite a bit like um, DNA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I, I don't know if you have heard me talk about this because a lot of my content just because of all of the nonsense is uh, only up for, in, you know, in certain spaces and places, but I had a very interesting experience with sound and light and DNA the last time I was home in Los Angeles. And the the visual that you've got here of the two dragons looks a lot like the way I described the visual I had of watching DNA be written, or as I term it, playing the glass bead game, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and and so the I, I feel like somehow that our DNA is this sort of connection between uh, our inner reality and this outer world that you're describing. This is this sort of external thing with, with day and night and then connected through light and electricity. Like the way I was perceiving what I was looking at was that somehow with sound and light, DNA is able to be rearranged or rewritten right yeah. recoded mm -hmm. um and when i'm looking at this visual that you've got going here it feels like i'm looking at the same thing outside of the body that i was looking at sort of inside of my, uh, uh, on the inside with that experience yeah well it makes sense uh, you know you, you reference it to dna there a, a spiral that yep. uh, you know what you're looking at there's a sine wave in 2d in 3d that's a spiral this is what's sacred about the spiral, and you see it in every nation's glyphs. They knew, you know, our ancestors knew how this worked a long, long time ago, and all this information has been stolen from us. Yeah, but, you, I know, think you, you can see how it works in this construct, and that actually governs all these life forms in this world. It does play a massive part, and I, I don't think we would survive without it. Yeah, this place would be a very uncomfortable place to live when all this switches off, and come the reset, which is going to happen. Yeah, uh, it's going to be uncomfortable for a while till it starts back up. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Right, and you know, and this decode here was actually decoding the um, the Milky Way. This is what the Milky Way is actually doing. It's creating a big, massive spiral across the world. And uh, this also, you know, it ties in what Jimbo said. Jimbo's a black box engineer, and he said it's behaving like an oscilloscope on a cathode ray tube. You know, this is, he actually decoded the sun mechanism for us, Jimbo. It's a sweep back transformer and fly back killer. In other words, it starts up in the east. It moves slowly across the map. So that's your sweep back transformer. The fly back killer suppresses the light long enough for it to get back to the start position to start again, which is the next dawn. So it goes, moves along, shuts down, returns back as quick as possible and ready for the next sunrise. The, that return back, you know, we're seeing in our research, that's the light they call on the ISS. You're still seeing part of this technology being elevated in the sky, but the sun part of it's been switched off, which, you know, the, this is what you see in glyphs, of like Egyptian glyphs with characters or arms missing. I decoded yeah. it on an off switch. It's been dis disconnected. 
So, you know, this is how they, they I decode the uh, glyphs. You look at it and say, well, that's, a, that's an off switch. Oh, that's an on switch, you know. Same with the Nazca line. This is relating to frequency or this relates to, you know, another part of how it works. You know, that, that's what got me onto this, the, my decoding of the Nazca lines being technological blueprints for this construct. And that's what started all this research. But, you know, that led us to where we're at today. And it's never stopped. It just keeps giving and giving and giving and make, you know, it's, it becomes blatantly obvious and laughable now. You know, it's, uh, how do we not see this before? It yeah. shows, you know, we've been indoctrinated for such a long time, Emily. You know, forced into belief systems and all this confusion and differences and division. It's all division. They're all about dividing us all. Yeah. Divide, you know, divide and conquer. That's what they do. This yeah. is what they've done to the world. And they'll use religion as and when needed. If they want a war somewhere, they'll create a religious one. Or good cop, bad cop, as in, you know, communist uh, China against some other country or whatever. In North Korea, South Korea, they create these divides. The same people running both countries. So, you know, anyone wanting to defect, forget it. You're going to defect to the same bloody entity. <laughs> forget it. Just just make a video and put it on YouTube and go and make a new life somewhere quick. <laughs> do not defect because you're going to defect to the same entity yeah they all work together and you know the space agencies nuclear technology particle accelerator technology this is this unites that entity this is what they're all interested in and involved in can i ask and you a question about this what we we're just looking at like i noticed so we're looking at glastonbury and i noticed that it said it was talking about avalon yeah right um what do you think about places that have the same name so there's like um avalon is where is catalina island i was it, gonna actually mention this to you at the start <laughs> when okay. you, you, you were talking about something at the start and it slipped my mind but this is what you call twinning okay you, ever, you know when the twin cities yeah like we've we'll say one where you will live to one where i live they'll say it's a twin it's not the city that's a twin it's the technology below it's the, the technology yeah okay. yeah so, it's the same configuration of technology is what it's telling me so i so there's a catalina island it's just off the coast of california right sort of and they the town there is called avalon right and there's no shortage to the list of people i know who've had strange experiences there and then you also have people like uh, la marzuli or someone who will talk about giants being found there and stuff like that right mm, um yeah. this is uh uh the kind of place that like a lot of people will go to catalina island with their girl scout troop or their boy scout troop or their summer camp or whatever and some of the strange experiences that that i've had that i talk about that a lot of my stories are based around were also in locations that had these kinds of camps right like kind of thing um the other place so where i grew up in chatsworth right uh the main street in chatsworth is uh devonshire and i grew up on the corner of devonshire and mason and devonshire and mason those were the intersecting streets and there's a place in england called chatsworth house right yeah, that's common, in devonshire in, right yeah it's common name of that yeah yeah, that's in that's in Devonshire, and there's a huge sort of Masonic -y castle looking building there. But <laughs> Chatsworth is where I, I. It is my opinion that there is an angel there, right? I don't know if it's a small angel or a large angel based on. I don't know what sort of size has to do with activity. Right. Based on the oddities and the cast of characters in and around Chatsworth, it feels um, like something major, but I don't know that size correlates. I mean, I'm pretty little and I come with a lot of gas. Right. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that size matters. Um, I would say it depends where they plug them into the technology to run things their side, um, you know, the scale of it. That's what, you know, this Operation Rainbow Warrior, that's why we ask people to estimate the, scale, the diameter of the rainbow they're looking at. That gives you the scale of the halo that you're looking at underground. 
So, so right. we're talking, but we're talking that whatever is in Chatsworth could be a twin, the one in Chatsworth, uh, California, right? Which I yeah. think there's a whole network of them, and and the 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 Avalon, Catalina Island, that whole area is not far. So there's like a network of them, but that these then would be twins or or somehow partnered with the one across over in England, and probably like on some weird, like I I always. I see things this way, right? Like my father was born and raised in Los Angeles, but had this um, overwhelming attraction to being in England, right? My parents lived in England for five years before I was born. And then immediately upon coming back, they had children and moved to Chatsworth, right? So it's like almost like whether it's an awareness, like whether there's something in my family's lineage that uh, is directing them Masonically (laughs) or whether it's just, (laughs) like a fly fly to shit like that's an that's sort of an energy that resonates for him so of course yeah. he's gonna set up shop and and whatnot where the vibration feels right to him it makes you wonder doesn't it you know that you know what attracts you to that area is it familiar from a previous life or something we you know i think this this is encoded into us and we are attracted to certain areas for some reason well, yeah you, know, you can elaborate you know you can guess and elaborate on why forever i suppose but you have to consider things like that don't you i think what is attracting us to that area since the last time we've spoke i have spent a lot of time with walter russell's charts Mm -hmm. right i haven't read a ton of walter russell because i'll be honest i don't have a lot of sit still time to to sort of read but i i do a lot of looking at charts and his periodic table and the different ways he has them laid out with color and harmonics and i think that some of it has to do like i really started looking at the periodic table right the regular periodic table and then i went and looked then i started comparing things and looking at his periodic table and i think that some of the elements that he has classified into the different octaves right Mm -hmm. um bloodlines have to do with the trace amounts of specific combinations of these elements in the blood and that the people that have that in their blood will be attracted to locations where an octave like a frequency a sound or a light a light octave is emitting the 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 frequency that attracts that element right like very, I, poss- very possible isn't it I figured out that I think the alchemical marriage has to do with combining elements from these periodic tables within families. And I figured out that my mother was ruthenium on the periodic table. And when I felt like I, I I just, it was just a theory. And when I followed it down, like it, it was a pretty fruitful return. And that really began to make a lot of sense, even explains my attraction to this material and why I'm talking about it with you right now. Because we're going to get into fusion and fission and stuff like that in a little bit. Um, so I think that might be one answer as to how people become almost magnetized to some of these locations. Yeah. Yeah. You, you have to ask these questions, you know. You probably could never answer it, but it has to be encoded into us, you know. When it, we're, we're a very sophisticated creature. Yeah. And we're only just discovering ourselves, really. You know, they've lied about our own anatomy, everything. Yeah. So we're you know we're just discovering things ourselves. So you know things like that we do put on, we do discuss it and put things on the shelf. You know we can't prove it or some things will need exploration to get a bit of better answer or you know a better idea of what's taking place with that scenario. But that's you know that's these are the things you have to discuss. Yeah. You know I'm glad that you're looking at Walter's work as well. You know I, I haven't read his books yet either. By the way I don't need to. I can decode his work just looking at it. Yeah. And that's what happens for me. Like my intuition and my, I have some of that sort of clear sentience or whatever, where I can just like look at something or touch something. And it sort of stimulates some, some thought. My, my girlfriend, Laura and, and my dear friend, Marcy, they have a Walter Russell study group every week, just the two of them. It's just the two. It's not really a group. It's just them. Right. Mm-hmm. So like they're, they're working on this sort of like book information part of it and for me i really just let the the charts and the diagrams and the quotes speak to me yeah, yeah, uh it's, yeah. yeah. so all right let's continue walter will, walter, walter will give you the 
technical information on it, but he'll never he can never let you know what creates it. You know, he won't show you it's an angel creating all that. But you know, that was my decode. I decoded his work is from the angel technology. I was getting the same same decodes myself, be you know, this technology that someone must be aware of it. And then when I found Walter's work, I said, you know, I looked at a couple of images and I said, and it was like seeing something you recognized and knew. It was like second nature to know what it is and even explain it. And I thought, I've never seen these images before. How can I explain these? But I can. Yeah. yeah. I can look at them and know what they relate to. Only because only I've done this research, I would say. But, you know, was it already encoded into me? And I just recognized it. I don't know. Well, doesn't it, it makes you wonder, right? Like if one of our, like I, I'm starting to understand my own familial connections to some of this. And when we get into some fusion and fission a little later, I'll tell you about some of that. But I think it wouldn't be surprising to me if we were to find out that, you know, someone in your family line, you know, had a lot to do with building or maintaining or working on some of the outposts that came up around these things. And so really had to understand how it worked, right? Uh, because yeah. it comes so second nature to you. And, and um, you know, m my family scenario is a little bit different, but like I'm starting to find out that lines of inquiry that I have been making for many, many, many years now, like that there's people in my family who worked on that and I never knew that, right? So like it, there is some something encoded inside of us for either interest in this or the ability to understand it, right? And and it's just the time bomb waiting to go off as to when you will realize it and start pursuing it. Yeah. Yeah, it just needs a trigger, doesn't it? You know, yep. someone will trigger it and you'll say, ah, now I know what that relates to and that'll yep. lead you down another route, won't it? And, you know, more discoveries and decodes. You know, you must be having your own revelations yourself. I think everyone will once they start looking at this research and seeing the map and model how how things are you know coming together. Yeah, they're gonna you know they'll know things about certain parts of scripture or you know whatever you know pick a scenario or a topic. They'll know something that slots in it somewhere that we don't know yet. That's yep. how it's going. You know, that's how it'll work. They'll say, "Hey, this relates to this." You know, we've had that before when I was discussing um, fusion reactors, Walter's motor. Uh, there was a, a, you know, I can't prove this, but there was a guy came in my stream. He told me he was a, a Navy guy. And what I was explaining with Walter's motor was exactly what he'd seen taking place on the nucleus he'll be worked on. Yeah. So, you know, it's more confirmation for me. I can't prove that, but I don't think anyone's going to be able to debunk that because this is really how it works. That's what's sacred about the cross in a circle. Oh, well, you always... Anytime you like, whenever you find some place where there is uh, electricity or water, like water pipes or electricity lines run or whatever, you always find the cross in the circle, right? Yeah. Like literally, yeah. the dials to turn them on and off will look like that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it's right in your face, people. All you, like literally, you can go down to the boiler room in your apartment building. And you will find evidence of this reality in the boiler. Yeah, room. yeah, you 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 reenacting it on a human scale. Yeah, <laughs> you going down yep. to into your underworld. You turn in a valve that's a cross in a circle. Yep, and you get hot or cold stuff, don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah. Right, so this part of the decode, this is uh, Saint Michael's Tower. And you'll notice the buttresses on it. Um, there are four sections that actually stick out and get narrower and narrower. That's why I would decoded this. This is no different to Walter Russell's motor. It's a fusion reactor. It's compressing the light spectrum in water to a fusion point. This is how well, this is all a fusion reactor actually is. Mm -hmm. Walter's Walter's motor is a very basic fusion reactor, and so is the Pyramid of Egypt. It's it's the niches in its wall are exactly the same as this. It's that was a fusion reactor, the pyramid. So you know they've always known fusion it's nuclear technology, basically how it works. Mm -hmm. It's always been here this knowledge, and I... you know to know to know that the pyramid and was you know very advanced like that. And not just that pyramid. You know all the pyramids in the world have to have this same kind of function going on. If you look at the decoder done of the Dendera right light bulb. It uses mercury to divide the positive and negatives. Now, they found an amount of mercury below one of the Mex Mexican pyramids. You know, my our research or my decode can explain that. No one else's is one, is it? It was another fusion reactor. 
so this this uh this tower is interesting like i look a lot at a lot of the architecture around here in austin and what you're showing here with the rings and the different octaves and the different colors and whatnot mm -hmm. i have like I, I i've talked about quite a bit but I, I view and and like sometimes i don't even know the right language to to use but some of the buildings here i think could be could be uh functioning as something like this because i will watch the way like the all the buildings here are this interesting sort of reflective metal and glass right but it looks like this in terms of like like you might have uh one portion of the building at the bottom that the light looks like it's reflecting sort of purple or blue green all the way up right it literally looks like some sort of um something is measuring uh, different gases or particulates or elements in the air and it's encoded on the building in color right and mm -hmm. these buildings are creating a lot of reflection and a lot of light um, I, I think that the buildings themselves are are technologies I, I don't think they're just apartment or office buildings like I think they are parts of a machine that are performing certain functions and I think in this particular case with some of these buildings in Austin Fusion is the function they're performing very possible, Emily. You know, the, to me, most of them are just static, like this one here. This isn't actually doing anything. This building is a depiction right. of a tower, you know, but it's, you have to decode what it represents, which is what this decode was. Now, modern buildings, you're probably right. You know, they, they know a lot more now than they did back in those days about harnessing this energy. So, they, you know, it can be done. It, it has to be done. You know, you look at these old, what they call Roman baths. They weren't Roman baths, but everyone had baths. It's, it's like everyone thinks that the Celts stood around doing nothing until the Romans invaded and invented everything. We're all other crap. <laughs> you know, we had a monetary system. We had leadership. We had communities. We had roads. <laughs> we had forts marking these sites before, and they came and put their forts on top of ours <laughs> when they, you know, when they invaded. So yeah. even even well, if the buildings are just a like a totem to something like the, like like what you're saying this is right, um, I think it's representing that activity taking place in the environment. Oh yeah, it's a marker for what's taking place below. Yeah, yeah that represent a, a function taking place below. That's why it's yeah. in that location. Yep. Yep. And and of course, obviously because it's called Saint Michael's, it's been you know claimed by the church and installed there by the church. We represent this kind of thing, which yeah. probably doesn't mean a lot to people. But you know you, what you know now is they're just laying claim to the glory, aren't they? It's another cult or empire laying claim to the glory below. Yeah. And depicting its operation basically, but you know it's it's basically saying below here is a fusion reactor. Yep. Mm hmm. And this is, you know, this is what it represents in Walter's I, Walter's work. You know, it represents it perfect, doesn't it? You can see now what Walter work uh, relates to. I think that there's groups of people, maybe we call them secret societies, who understand how to observe these buildings in the downtown skyline and the colors on them that light up or reflect or whatnot. And by doing that, understand what stage of the cycle the machine is in and understand like this is a good time to do this or that or whatever right um i think mm. that it's in, hidden in plain sight like the uh like they almost act like monitors of the activity the the buildings and the technology and the lights downtown and people who are in the know can read the code and they understand oh, yeah. Yeah. where we are go ahead yeah the, you know I, I agree with that you know they're all messaging to each other you see movies and it's just a message to them you know they, they're bragging and boasting about this knowledge aren't they you can see it yeah is uh, that you know when you've decoded it yourself you know you can see the the blatant bragging and boasting of that knowledge yep can i ask you about this couple of things so first of all mm -hmm. like you oh, have go back to... go back uh go back seconds a little first yeah okay. just a little uh, forward a bit more so you get that red triangle well the red chevron there back a little bit back a little right. yeah it's in it's, uh, it's on St. michael's tower there right the red triangle that's your witch's hat oh yeah that's where the witch's hat comes in that's eve's hat that represents eve yeah. Adam's, you know, the wizard would be Adam, wouldn't it? Yeah. So that's, uh, we, we used to have a thing on the park when we were kids. It was called the witch's hat and it was shaped like that. And you could sit on it and it like 
Yes. So this is what the Wizard of Oz is about, then. The witch and the witch. It the, pretty much is, isn't it? And yeah. someone hiding behind the curtain. Yeah. You know, the yellow brick road. <laughs> that's <laughs> that. That's the dark has this as well. Like it dark, it dark has uh, Adam as as the wizard and Eve as the witch, and the children uh, follow the yellow brick road for sure. Yeah, so now you know what the witches that actually represents is the cone from the angel, the spiral. You know, it creates yeah. a cone shape into the sky, and each uh, you know there's a uh, centripetal and centrifugal forces taking place, and that's what's creating all those elements you see in Walter's chart. You know, Walter's uh, table of elements only works in a circular pattern because that circle represents that spiral of that angel and how it works. You, They've taken that and put it all side by side and it doesn't make any sense to anyone anymore, this new chart they've made. It only makes sense on Walters because that's how the technology works. And yeah. if you know how it works, you can make anything on that chart. You can't learn anything from the regular periodic table. You can't understand anything about the elements or what they correspond to by a regular periodic table. You yeah. have to I mean, I would imagine most people probably got lost with Walter's work. You know, they've nothing to reference it with. You know, what is creating that Walter? What's the cause of that Walter? He can't give you the cause. You know, none of them can ever give you the cause. The, the, all they're doing is talking about the effects. Yeah. But we're showing you the cause. And these, are, you know, Walter's work explains the effects brilliantly anyway. So all we have to do is bring Walter's work to life and explain it. So can I ask you about this shape? So I noticed that this down vector and, and, up, and up vector, right? Yep. Um, the, and, and when you put them together, it looks remarkably like the shape of nuclear reactors. Mm -hmm. That nuclear power plants that you see have these, this shape, right? Yeah. And cooling towers. <laughs> yeah, the cooling towers, right? And yeah. so I'm assuming that this is why, that it's a marker, Right as well, like they don't ever just hide. They 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 want everything to look like, like to be symbolic as well as functional. Yeah. Right. Um, and then I have a question. And then this in the middle here. We can continue playing. Is this part in the middle? Why the compass and square for masonry? Yeah, that's where it comes from. It's you know that's that fuse, thought, that's right. that compression and to yeah. the fusion point. That's what it represents. It's the two cones overlapping. So is the Star of David. It's the it's two cones. It's representing. Um. The so, let me ask you about your thoughts on that's such a it's such a complex and convoluted topic. But your thoughts on nuclear power and on fission versus fusion and, and and whatnot um you know we're we're it's i think that what the um one of the things we're going to see over the course of this election cycle is uh rfk jr be sold on nuclear power mm -hmm. right like right now he's opposed to it but he's open to learning more and I think that that's going to that's going to be part of the arc of his shifting over this process is that he is going to become sold on nuclear power. Of course, the nuclear power he's going to become sold on is fission reactors that create a lot of waste. Right. As opposed to looking into fusion. When you what is the relationship between uh the angels and nuclear reactors be they fission or be they fusion it's the configuration of the the um pressure zones where it narrows you can there's a walter russell chart actually on it hold on um if you are uh, seeing your screen sharing can you open another tab go to my channel and find um I'll, here, I'll stop the share so you can pull it up. I can go back to the share so you can pull up. I'll, have to, I'll have to find it as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll just have a quick look for it. Okay. So I ask you this because... Um, in fact, hold know, on a sec. I think I'm sure I explained that. I did a show of that in that interview with Robin. I think I did. I'll just... Uh, oh, these adverts do your head in, don't they? Could have waited to, <laughs> wait till two adverts play if you can even watch your own video. Um, I, you know, I was for a long time, I think thinking of those two things as separate, 
And then I started to think of them as uh, like separate, but connected. And now I think of them as very interconnected. Um, you know, like I've done a lot of looking into the connection between uh, DNA and nuclear fusion. Um, and I, as part of that, like I have found that like I, I was researching the connection between particle accelerators and nuclear fusion, and they have that mo water very muddied, right? But I'm a hundred percent certain that there's no place where they're experimenting, experimenting or doing anything with nuclear power that there isn't also particle accelerator or accelerators there. I have learned yeah. that they're experimenting with powering fusion reactors with DNA, right? And that they have certain reactors that are powered by particle accelerators. And in dark, it's pretty clear to me, in lots of other kind of science fiction-y things like this, it's almost hard to tell the difference between the two. They're so connected, right? So that was why I was asking you. So just kind of with that, whatever you want to show, just kind of your thoughts on, on nuclear power in general, like how you see the difference between fission and fusion, what you think of the idea of having a future where um, people really understood fusion um, and, and, it, and it wasn't, I mean, like what it seems like to me is they want people to simultaneously want nuclear power, but be fearful of it because they misunderstand it and they don't want people to understand fusion. They really want them to accept fission but I, like I, I, it's, it's like, it's very weird to me, right? Like right now it seems to me we're going to be, get all this nuclear stuff, but it's going to be fission and not fusion. Seems yeah. to me like they want to keep fusion for themselves because fusion comes with a whole lot of magic. Whereas fission creates a whole lot of mess. So they want people to have the mess and they get the cool shit. <laughs> right, and they want people to be fearful of it so that they will stay away from where the cool shit is. Yeah. Right. They they we want cheap energy, but we want it away from where we live, and we don't want to know anything about it. Meanwhile, at the places where they have fusion, that's where people are going to be experimenting with things that would make our world seem like something entirely different than what they tell us it is. How do I have that? Is that pretty good? Yeah, it sounds good to me. Um, right. they, you know, they can't they can't reveal how it all works, really, can they? Because you know, people could go up there and actually make one themselves if you know how this works. Right. I'm I'm surprised. Well, I was going to say I'm surprised people have not already, but they probably have, and they go missing. They, they keep it quiet because you can't. It's not something you can put on eBay or <laughs> or, okay, <laughs> or free the world and <laughs> give you this. You know, it would just vanish. I, think I, don't think, I don't think that many people's, you know, aware of how this technology actually works anyway. And it is a dangerous technology to play with. I think you know, that's uh, part, part of what all the catalytic converter thefts is about. People trying to experiment with this on their own. Hmm. Rhodium. Yeah, so, you know, so fusion, you can, you can still have a fusion reactor that doesn't take it to the fusion points. You know, if you look at the St. Michael's Tower, you've got four octaves there. You don't have to use all four octaves to, to generate electric. You can generate, use three of them without going to a fusion point, and you will generate electric, which I think which is what Walters was doing. You know? But it did, you know, he did say this point gets white hot, and that's what goes into meltdown. If you know it gets too hot, it's going to go into meltdown if you can't cool it. So that's where a meltdown actually is. You know, it's just getting too hot. The the steel ball at the center of the Mortar, basically. Well, it's not glass a mortar, bead. Either. The glass bead, yeah. The yeah, it's going to get too hot, and you know that's what they call a meltdown. <laughs> well, th this is why they were interested in using DNA to power fusion reaction because they discovered that some that they want to create custom strands of DNA, right, to power fusion reactors because some people have DNA that acts as a superconductor, meaning that it is able to get hot and stay cool at the same time because it has low electrical resistance. 
So if they can create custom DNA, they must have learned that by experimenting with DNA that they got from someone or something in nature. And then they just want to reproduce it massively. So in my head, what that means is that there are some people that are basically particle accelerators with the ability to power fusion reaction because they're able to stay cool while they get hot. Have you seen those superconductor magnet thingies flying around? Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, so that's like, that. It, like it, it sounds crazy, but the, it, it really, if you look at a human spinal cord, it looks a lot like linear particle accelerator. Yeah. Right? And that some people have a DNA or genetics that is able to activate fusion power and they have very low electrical resistance so they don't blow up when it happens. Well, you know, we are designed in its image. You yep. know, when you look at the technology, we are designed in its image. I can't find that exact image I was looking for you now, but it doesn't matter. You know, I'll do an overlay and show, show it on the on a re-release of this. Okay, cool. uh, I couldn't find it. I, the two videos Sandra made, I can't find it in there. So it was maybe a separate one she made for a unique video that I made. Okay, so we'll continue. But it was with just, that. you know, it was just the configuration of the motor that would give you fission or fusion. Yeah, you, know, you you configure it one way you love fusion and you do it the other way you love fusion. So there's it's just a different design. That's all it is. You know, yep. you could actually have the fusion reactor, and what it releases becomes fusion anyway. You know, it's got to compress and then expand. You know, expand and expanding part of it is what you would call fusion. That then you, could daisy, you know you could daisy chain them together and it just keep yep. running forever, wouldn't it? Yes, that's do you, you you know Benjamin Balderson? No. So he's, he's been on my show a couple of times. He's a, a lab alchemist, right? He makes spagyrics and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. He was saying that he was explaining to me about how like the next step from fission is fusion. And so if you just continue, if you like, rather than just letting it break apart and leaving it that way, like the next step would be to fuse it back together. So just like you said, daisy chaining, bring it together, break it apart, bring it together, break it apart. That's where you get the over unity right like the endless amount of power supply and energy yeah. and whatnot yeah. yeah 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 that's how walter's russell work uh, walter's motor works you know once it started running it generated enough electric to run its own pump to power itself and the university a 52 room university so it's got no shortage of power yeah uh, and going back to you know what you're saying about humans you look on screen at the what do you see on screen do you see two lungs and a froth on a stomach a hundred percent, yeah. Yeah, you know, you're compressing your food or liquids down to to the fusion point, which is solar plexus in the human body, I suppose. You know, that's a good reference point, isn't it? Yeah. Re, me, fa, sol, five, five, <laughs> five octaves. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you look at the, what's going on there and you can look at a human anatomy and think, well, that's the throat. You know, there's your compression, of course, the other end is the expansion, isn't it? It's got to go somewhere. <laughs> and in, in, in the process, it's creating energy. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you look you look at that animation on the screen and that's kind of how we work. You know, we're compressing light entities in air and water into our bodies and it's, you know, that's it's electrical charge. That's a beautiful. I love this graphic. Like you some I mean I, I love looking at all your stuff, but some of the graphics that you come up with look like visions I've seen in my own head on the psychedelics or when I'm just meditating <laughs> or whatever. I love it. Go ahead. Well, Seth, Sandra and her husband do most of them for us now. You know, they, they took over doing the graphics for us because they got more, you know, I'm doing more decodes than graphics or I'll do little bits and pieces now and I'll ask them for certain animations or say, can you make this, you know, give them some instructions of what I want made, basically. Or they'll do their own uh, work as well. Well but, done, you know, Sandra and Hubby. Yeah, oh, fantastic work. The best, you know, the best graphics I've seen myself. I couldn't get anywhere near that standard because I, I don't have the time to learn it to that standard. I'd learn enough to, of each software to get into trouble and produce the <laughs> <laughs> In style, if I can, you know, to give it my best shot. <laughs> But Sandra and Sean, you know, they really took over that area of it was the graphics experts. They've got the time to sit there and do all the, you know, tutorials, learn, master it, and they've done a fantastic job of it. Yep. You couldn't ask for better, could you, when you look at the animations of being no, really, I mean, I, the work I, you put into it? Sometimes I have had the thought that I would love to have them put together 
a whole big file and I just take it to someone I know who does like the visuals at, at raves and electronic music things, not tell yeah. them what it is, just let them make a visual. Yeah, go out. It would, wouldn't it? It would, uh, people it would fit would love in. It. It would fit perfectly. And it, whether people understood what they were looking at or not, it would make the imprint on their consciousness and they would be yeah. forever changed. Yeah. Yeah. They'd recognize it. You know, they'd say, this looks familiar. What's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> this is making sense. This. <laughs> I may ask them for, I may ask them someday. I may do that someday. Yeah. I just put it on the background. <laughs> yeah. Put on the front of the big screen. I've done that before. I've gone in the shop and you know, we've got the TVs for sale. I put them onto my YouTube channel and left it play, play in the live streams on a few of their tellies. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so people in the shop walk past and mm, that looks interesting. <laughs> it's a good, it's, it's a, it's a very like subtle way of like inviting people to ask questions without shoving it down their throat. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, the subject matter is very, very serious. We can, you know, we can laugh on that. We've got to have a sense of humor. If you don't have a sense of humor, this would drive you insane. Yeah, it really would, you know, decoding all this and you don't have a sense of humor. I mean, you know, I think humor and music's our best friends. It's what yeah. keeps you sane and keeps you going. Eh? I agree. And that's why we use it a bit in our music because, you know, people's going to need a bit of comfort after what they realize has been <laughs> humanity, you know, a little bit of music. If you don't like the music, mute it and, you know, substitute your own music and put your own music to the graphics. It still works. It doesn't matter what kind of music it is. This is, a, you know, sacred geometry is a universal language and it will go with any music you make for it. I like how they made this graphic look. I don't know if this is you or them, but when I was little, I, when I would go to like Magic Mountain or Disneyland, I would get a jawbreaker. You know what a jawbreaker is? Yeah. The big candy, right? Yeah. And I'd stick the whole thing in my mouth, but it, it it had layers in it of different rainbow, right? If you yeah. happen to chip off a piece of it, the inside looked like that. So they were telling us when we were kids, but we were thinking it was just candy. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, they're called gobstoppers here. Yeah those, are, yeah. those are the smaller ones. They have these giant ones here. Like it's like the size of a tennis ball. I don't know how I fit it all in my oh, mouth. Jill. <laughs> yeah. Take you a week to get through. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, you know that's the electromagnetic electromagnetic sphere of an angel. That's a, that's the color you see below the rainbow. That's why the sky looks a different color. That's you looking at that. That's what you're seeing. You're seeing through the you know the the rainbow is just revealing there's something below it. Yeah. And you know if you time lapse it, it looked like the rainbow's revolving. It's not actually revolving. It's just the sun moving across the sky, and that the, the rainbow would react to where the sun's position is and appear to revolve. That's oh, wait, you just had the the flammarion engraving there. I just saw. I've never noticed that in your work before. But you just had that down in the left corner. Hold on a second. Did I right there? The flam. Oh, it went so fast. Yeah. Hold on a second. So is the rainbow just evidence that we are living under an electromagnetic dome? There's many domes. Each angel's got its own dome. Its own dome. It's, I wouldn't call it a dome. I'd call it a sphere because you know sphere. we only see half of it, but right. half, half's below ground as well. So, this so yeah, one... that that depiction there is like someone peeking out the outside of the rainbow or the sphere at the real world, isn't it? You know, this it's telling you there's more going on here than meets the eye. So You've I got put... the clouds and everything there on the left, haven't you? Yeah, we've talked about the Flammarion engraving. I've, I've talked about it a couple times on different shows, but most specifically with, with my friend Juan Ayala from the Juan on Juan podcast. But what I love about the Flammarion engraving is that this sort of starry sphere or dome here, like when we went sky watching in um, Joshua Tree, mm -hmm. you could see that there was like some kind of sphere or dome above us that had like the, the there was all of these they weren't stars they it, it looked like it was like wallpapering on the dome right yeah. <laughs> and they looked like that and um laura is a cranial sacral therapist my girlfriend and she has this book called brain stars and there's these things called glia that are like in the lining between your brain and your skull yeah. right and it looks exactly like that. The same thing we saw in the sky in Joshua Tree and those things that are on that Flammarion engraving. And so whatever that dome or sphere is outside of us is, like we said before, we're made in the image of it, right? Like our brain, yeah. our mind, our head has the same thing on the inside. Yeah, it seems that way, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> 
it just all ties in. The more you know, the more you depict or um, decode or add to it or look into, you can you can fit things into places. You know, it's a, it hasn't got a massive relevance, but it's still an important piece, isn't it? You know, a little just a little decode like that, and you think, yeah, that makes sense. That's kind of what's going on. Yeah. So you know, this one here, you know, this is a rainbow that peekaboo's across the road from my mother's house. <laughs> yeah. And that one's around the back of the house. Yeah. So, you know, this was me watching them over summer and winter. This was in the summer. You can see how the tree bending down towards it, you know, they all bow down towards it. It's been, everything's been drawn to the centre of that rainbow. Yeah. It's, it's Taurus fields pulling it all in, harnessing the energy is where it's taking place. Yeah. So, you know, that, that's why I'm doing in. things like this. These are visual proofs of, you know, how these angels manipulate the nature around you because that's important. You know, you can prove this to yourself. They create your own local weather. Yeah. And that's that's me showing you, look, this weather's reacting to this being active and doing what it's doing. Yeah. And that was, you know, it was in winter. Look, no leaves on the trees. It's rainbow still in the same place. <laughs> it lives there. Yeah. And, you know, why it was so wild that night, uh, I looked up and lo and behold, there's the moon passing by. So it was playing a shepherding role, basically escorting the moon across and creating... You know, elements in the matter that obviously the moon utilizes or something. You know, there's a, there's a bigger picture going on. All the all this technology is networked and working together. Is what you know that is what it's decoding as. It's all running in like clockwork. You know, it's running smooth like clockwork. It's all designed to do what it's supposed to be doing, and they're all involved in creation processes. And they say, you know, this is just ways of trying to think of. You know, can we? Chuck something on the ground to detect where they are. Uh, you know, this was like some earlier research. That's actually got a USB charging pad below it, which is not not much different to what one of these angels do. On it. you know, it's on a small scale. Yep. So, but you know, the, um, since then they found other ways. Of, you know, detecting them. The, the names of the saints are telling you there's one there. You just need to shoot. You know, work out the configuration of it. Oh, the sacred wells. There's another avenue you can go down now because you know that we know now that's going to connect to Node Three, which on CERN's is cleaning cycle, which you know that's where the water has to come back out of the halo when it's getting ejected, finished with cycles, finished cleaning cycle. This is this is the cleaning cycle of the Egyptian glyphs we're trying to mention. And we had a, we had a, we actually had a hard time decoding that because it was funny because the way they worded it, you know, they word things to put you off looking into it. Yeah. They give it, you know, some disgusting descriptions and things. Oh, maybe they couldn't think of a better word at the time for it. I don't know why it was done that way. But you know, the the it was called the eater of the ass. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what it trans that's what it translated as. And one conscious I'm not reading that out, so you know, this is <laughs> this is when we were making that 12 gates video with the Egyptian decodes. And she said, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that. So I can't remember how she worded it anyway, but, you know, I'd already decoded it. You know, it's a cleaning cycle. And we I later found a, a better decode of it, you know, that didn't mention a cleaning cycle. They're looking at a sense configuration, you know, it's part of a cleaning cycle, Node 3 on the halo. And, you know, that made more sense. Yeah, that, that's what it was trying to explain, Mom. But we couldn't find, you know, better terminology at the time. And she had to reword it in the video because she said, I'm not saying that. <laughs> I don't blame yeah. her. But, you know, you can see now how they would word things to put you off. Even looking at it or bringing it up in what you would call civilized conversations. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> You're not we have talk to, about don't we? Ass on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eat her over the ass. <laughs> what the right. hell? Yeah. In other words, it's something that removes the waste. Well, now, now, now we understand what homoeroticism is really about. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. It's all cover for, I mean, this is how, what, what's so crazy is that I can't tell you. How many things that we think of as being part of like the perversion or the criminal syndicate that is a misreading of what's really happening in those yeah. locations. Oh, yeah. It and is. so what you're talking, I mean, it would not surprise me at all if you found a bathhouse right next to one of these sacred locations, right? Because um, of exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, you you find that that there are all sorts of distorted ideas and behavior pop up around it because of some sort of mistranslate mistranslation, whether intentional or just due to like the distortion field, right? Like I think this is 
um, why you why you get hell's angels functional in areas where there is an angel, right? And you have yeah. sex trafficking and organ heart trafficking and drug trafficking all happening around there because it it it, it, it doesn't fail. Right. Like the area of Chatsworth that I'm talking about has all kinds of crazy shit going on around there, including that's where Charles Manson did all of his stuff. Right. Uh But there's if you if there's a if there's a strong energy field and you don't understand what it is and how it works, it's going to have all kinds of crazy effects on the on, on, on things around it, especially when a few people know what it is and everyone else doesn't. Right. And those few people are, you know, sort of running the show. Um, but it doesn't surprise me at all that that's that that you find that that name at one of these locations. Yeah. To explain to people what we're looking at here with the the different circles, the rings being connected. Right. What I was doing here, um, I was sent this drawn video. Um, it's, it's a guy who discovered a rainbow where you see the red circle on the map there. So I was, um, you know, using the green circles there as identifiers to prove, you know, this is the right location, just so I knew exactly where it was. I had to look and study his video, then look on Google Earth and say, right, this is the year, this is the year, this is the year. Yeah, we're in the right spot. Because the, the, the coordinates he gave us were further downstream or upstream. And I thought, well, that doesn't look right. So I had to fix it. And I realized this is where he was really standing to see it where he was. <laughs> um, so... He got it wrong where he was standing, but, you know, I corrected it by going by his video and looking what was here. And this is other things people can look at, you know. So, you know, you've got a church graveyard just across the road. The graves, you know, a graveyard. Yeah. That's that's another word for tomb or yep. angel room below. Sarcophagi. You see how yep. even that comes into it. Like the graves, you know, you live in scriptures or some of the graves of Adam. <laughs> You know, it's talking so, about doing so the these world. are the local, the interesting points locally, and be, based on that, you were able to. Some of them are out. interesting points, yeah, and yeah. some of them just markers to, to make sure I'm, you know, I've got, I'm in the right place and I'm marking where it is properly on the map. Yeah, it's just helped how, me mark it properly. How do you? This is the thing that, like, I'm, I'm, you know, when I first started hearing about flat Earth and these people were talking about like measuring things and uh, figuring out the angle of this and that i'm like that's like just where my brain sort of turned off right like mm-hmm. that it's just different than the way that i go about discovering what's true but yeah. it seems like an easy thing okay figure out where the edges in the center of the rainbow are send us the coordinates and then we can start mapping it out but like i don't know that i would know how to figure out where these things are because when you're looking at a rainbow where it looks like it is isn't always exactly where it is. So how do you, how do you, how do you actually figure out what the true center point is or what the where the ends actually are? Like, what is the best method to use to do that? Uh, I would say the diameter. You know, the, you give it a diameter. It has to fit on the map somewhere. And then when you start spinning that diameter around, looking at the buildings around it, you'll probably find it connects to churches or a cathedral or. Certain, you know, certain sacred sites or sites of interest. So you can use your pictures and those representations are somewhat accurate. Then if it looks like where the rainbow is coming down is near this building or this power plant that you always had some kind of funny idea about, then you can go, okay. And on the other side, oh, I see it. It's right where that Barton Springs is or where this mound is. And so we have the two ends and that creates the dome. And then we have some idea or the the sphere and then we can figure out if this is a big one or a small one yeah you know the, the, the diameter of the rainbow tell you if it's a big one or a small one like this one here it's quite small you know it's probably the smallest one we've seen yet okay but his, his, you know his drone was able to pick up the full rainbow the full circle rainbow because of the altitude and you know it was looking down at it so it was a it was an easy one to mark and he's found another one since then with his drone as well you know if anyone's got access to a drone Get them up there when it was when it was rain showers, and you'll see the full circle of rainbows off them, which you know it does help pinpoint it a bit more. Yeah, that's why I was being trying to be accurate with this. You know, it's to give people ideas. I know you won't get it accurate straight away. You know, give it your best shot. That's close enough for us, and you know, over time we can adjust it and tweak it if any new information comes in. It doesn't matter. You know, if you if you're off a bit, you see that one there. Look, that's probably a hundred feet wide or something. That one's quite small, so. I would term that as a cherubim roll. Okay. 
smaller angel, but you know, still part of the process. Yep. And it will connect to a larger one somewhere. So that's you know a small Adam, isn't it? Yep. So there's a big Eve there somewhere. <laughs> yep. Okay. And, that and makes the sense. overlap and the basic of Pisces will play a part in probably one of the buildings that's down there somewhere. Okay, so where there's a big one, you'll find lots of small ones around it. Yeah, you can find one or more, you know, that connect okay. to these big ones. I've seen you know, configurations that people's mapping now and, you know, talking, discussing it in our Discord with some of the people that's mapping them. That you makes know, sense. Can, that that makes get, sense. like three or four smaller ones connected to a big one. You know, it might not end there. You know, it could be, you might even find even more. It does make sense, doesn't it? You know, there's different, different configurations and roles. That makes sense to me because I see, like, I have... If you were to come visit me here, right, mm -hmm. I would take you to a few different locations, but they're all pretty close to each other, right? They're all sort of like, I'd say, like, I'd say that there's a big one here and then a bunch, a bunch of smaller ones, right, yeah. sort of around it. Um, and I think that each small one has its own sort of vibe and personality, and then there's like the overall feel of the entire area, right? So yeah. then that overall feel would be Eve and there would be several atoms uh, vying for her attention. Yeah, yeah. They, you yeah. know, they, all, the, all the nodes or poles on the halo, you know, they're, they're, they're what you would call the sons and daughters. Yeah. Because they're male and female. <laughs> you yeah. Know, so this, this is where people get confused uh, thinking there's incest going on. In families, in books, you'll probably yeah. notice that, yeah? Well, it's not talking about people. That's where they've gone wrong. It's yeah. talking about the technology. You know, it makes sense now. That, that's what I'm it's having. It's having sex with its sons and daughters, which means it's, it's just the nodes on the poles, like then, you know. In that... Interacting energetically with its sons yeah. and daughters. Then yeah. This is what, I, this is what, that's when I said that all this distorted behavior going around on in these locations. So again, it's like a misreading on the way up and a misreading on the way down. That's exactly what I meant. Yeah, right? it's, it's, it's been yeah. badly worded, badly worded or explained, yep. doesn't it? You know, we can give it a better, a better explanation now, now we know how, how it works. Well, I think that's why so many people in certain sects of, of secret societies, that's how they would come to believe that doing distorted behaviors like that would give you some kind of secret power or extra energy because yeah. of the misreading of that. Yeah. 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 So, you know, you, you get cults born from that, can't you? And, but it's, it's, you know, it's total, total, um, misrepresentation of what it's actually telling you it's been done intentionally yeah why you know why else would they change it or hide what it relates to it's to hide the technology so they can steal it yeah look at that halo there look that's a day daylight with stationary wand every yeah. rainbow every rainbow has got one of these above it <laughs> so wow that's find really clear yeah that is you really find clear. a rainbow right yeah when you find a rainbow at night time remember where it was if you see the moon going past, you'll get a lunar wave as it goes past that halo. That's what a lunar wave is. It's going past one of these and revealing there's something between you and the moon. Yeah. It's, these that, it's these that's revealing. Now, Hoppy Prophecy tells you in the end times, it's, it's going to spread cobwebs right across the sky. They're not cobwebs. They're these rev being revealed. And this they is what they're trying them. to hide with the chems. They should... <laughs> <laughs> it's all right there. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, I mean it. It it it's 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 beautiful in its simplicity, and also like it just like it's kind of like we're just walking around with our sunglasses on our head or our keys in yeah, our yeah. You know, we're just taking it's the tour. It's all right. Eh? Yeah, <laughs> we're taking the tour of the realm and you know elaborate on it, having a bit of fun about it, and seeing the seriousness of it as well. You know the the implications of what's happened. What they've done yeah. to humanity to this point to hide it. Every crime co you could ever commit, and ones we've probably never heard of or made up yet, they've committed to, to achieve where they're at now. You're going to love it's... dark. Like, you know, one would ask the question, like, to what end? Like, what is the purpose of that? Right. And it is just when you, what one of the, the, the like overall lesson of, of, I think, of that series, Dark is when you know something that no one else knows, even if you are well-intended, you will think, well, let me just do this one thing before I tell everybody else, right? 
I want to try this. I want to see what happens if I do that. And when you do that, you will unleash something that you will never be able to extricate yourself from. And before you know it, you have told so many lies and fucked up so many things that the only thing to do is to continue with that story. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of these people that are involved in this, they probably don't, they're probably not aware of what's going on. You know, they're probably told it's alien technology and God knows what they tell them. Mm. But, you know, they'll tell them anything about the truth, you know. Now, now, would you work for this entity knowing the steel in the creator's glory and the implication that has for mankind? You know, they can mess yeah. around with our DNA and everything now. Yeah. It tells you in the Emerald Tablets, you know, an attack will come, come from below. Uh, and also man keeps trying to steal what's below. <laughs> it doesn't get, more, you know, as, as obvious as that, does it? Yeah. yeah. That's what all the wars are about, right? It's yeah, like everything. yeah. It's, it's well, never, they're fighting it's over never. this. You know, from what I can see, they work together doing it. Yeah. And they've been doing that for a long time. They're all the same entity with different uniforms on. Yeah. But it's all about, I mean, you know, it's all, it's about this technology. It's about this power. And what you have is different people in different locations who have a history with it. Those people have a different set of genetics or ethnicity and so it seems to become a conflict between different people about land or religion or something but both of those things become important because of and are dictated by the technology that's under the ground so the yeah. war is really over the technology but the flavor that it takes on is uh, of a religious or ethnic or cultural nature yeah yeah perfect yeah, I'm trying to disguise it as one thing. Well, it's, you know, sleight of hand, isn't it? Can you explain? So the, in the other video that you sent, this one is short. It's three minutes. Maybe we can watch it just with the 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 sound if you want, or, or, or we can do it without sound. But I noticed that when I read the description at the bottom, and, and I've heard you reference it, but I, I want to be 100% clear on what you're talking about, this, um, that something was going to happen uh, that the rainbows are going to stop, that something's going to happen with the water and that the identification of certain spots is going to be important. So should we watch this video and then you can tell us about it or what do you want to? Yeah, yeah, let's go for it. Let's yeah. do that. Okay, let's, let's yeah. just watch. I'll, I'll play it with the sound on this one because it's so short. And... It, it does need elaborated on, you know, I could have made it into a few hours, that video, but I don't know, bore people to death. So it was a quick three-minute <laughs> decode of information that, you know, All you right. could spend hours decoding. <laughs> Today, we are going to decode the clouds and a few other things related. It's, I think it's so fascinating how those look like nuclear explosions, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Like it looks Don't like, it, yeah. yeah, it looks exactly like, I mean, uh, we, we, did, we did a whole series of things on how uh, mushrooms and mushroom clouds, bombs, nuclear bombs look like mushrooms. Um, but it's interesting that this shows up sort of here too, that I think that part of the reason that mushrooms are so interesting, whether they be just the edible kinds or the psychedelic kinds, is because they they do, my friend Jeff showed me something that kind of explained it, this guy Andrew DeSantis talking about how fungus is really good at decoding nuclear transclusions, which means like nuclear code, information from nuclear events, fission or fusion events, the mushroom can take that up and decode it and then offer answers or solutions. So I can't think of like anything more doctrine of signatures than this. <laughs> well, that's right, isn't it? <laughs> this cloud is called cumulonimbus. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. You know, I was just going to say the jellyfish. You know, you can see the jellyfish yeah. there, can't you? That's that's yep. also, I actually found out today they're edible as well. Yeah. I mean, they're I was, all, so so they're all bearing gifts, aren't they? <laughs> and you look at that the light, the the luminescence, right? The bioluminescence from the jellyfish. And then I was mm -hmm. listening to some thing today of like uh, mushroom music. So somebody hooked up their, uh, you know, synthesizer to mushrooms, and the mushrooms were playing all of these like fascinating sounds that had information in them, like right, like it's the sound of the mushroom and the light of the jellyfish. And I there's... remember someone telling me, you know, the mushroom is a brain food. They called it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Also known as the anvil cloud, 
Once we add in the missing components, you will see how it is created. Eve's cone drives up the cooler air up into the atmosphere, which is what creates the clouds. The top of the so there again, you're showing the fusion reactor with the with the mushroom cloud, <laughs> anvil cloud. It's just like oh wow, it's fascinating, dude. Yeah, this is one this in cloud, action, isn't it? Yep. is where the demiurge resides with a counter rotating flow this is Adam Adam's spiral is what causes the topper to flatten as the cloud spirals outwards from the flow of generated wind this is the spiraling pressure waves of electromagnetism with this one you can see the eye which is the overlap of two halos Adam and Eve the Vesica Pisces, the Scarab Beetle, the Eye of Horus, the Eye of the Taurus Field. Let's see what is in a name. Spiraling columns represent this process. This is what is sacred about geometry. They are depictions of various processes of the Creator's glory and how it works. It is a universal language that used to be taught everywhere. It is not a religion, it is just the truth. The Creator does not divide, he unites. All the world's sacred geometry shows we all knew this. It is the birthright of every human being. Scientists are now telling us we will see more rainbows. Do have your cameras at the ready. You know from our research we decode rainbows and can use them to mark where the angels' halos are below. This decode helps us identify how sacred and holy wells are formed. They seem to appear around Pole 3, one either side of it. We know Nord 3 is a cleaning cycle and this is where it will pump water from within the halo into underground springs and lakes, which is what is creating the sacred wells, streams and rivers, from source to sea. This pump system is also referenced in the heavens. I want to go back for a second. You had a bunch of names there. Mm -hmm. Isis, yeah. Eve, Mary, Alice, Queen, Goddess, right hand rule, Osiris, Adam, Joseph, Atlas, King, God, left hand rule. Okay. So this, what you're saying here is pole three, that this is an area of uh, whatever this city is in Sweden. Is this the same? Oh, this is in UK. This is the Glastonbury tour. Okay. So we're back to Glastonbury. So yeah, this we're recording, you know, we, we showed you where the rainbow is, which is where you've seen the, the, the red halo. Yeah. Now there's this bigger one factored in and we know three, we know no three is there because you've got a well on each side of it. Okay. All on the ground. So, you know, boots on the ground can show you there's a well that's yep. got two different types of properties either side of Nord 3. So I think that we've got that one positioned correctly now. Okay. B. And that, you know, that's the cleaning cycle we mentioned. This pump system is also referenced in the heavens by Antilia Pneumatica, a double pump system, Adam and Eve. And while we are in the heavens, we might as well decode Crater which is the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. The pot of gold is the angel's Taurus field, ladies and gentlemen. The story really is in the stars. You pause it there. Right, what do you see there? A halo above, a halo below, a Taurus field yeah. in the middle, and the spirals either side of it, which makes the pot. So it's the fusion reactor. It's no, the, the what the image on the right, I mean, <laughs> oh, right, right, but 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 it, okay. yeah, that that is that, yeah, okay. So, the um, oh, there was just something you said just a second ago in the video. Hold on a second, I just want to go back to the pot of gold. So the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow is the fusion reactor, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. that makes perfect it's, sense. It's, to it's, me. it's the it's the Taurus field, you know, that's you go to the end picture again, okay. Uh, the, the, the one at the end, yeah, is the angel's Taurus field, ladies that and gentlemen. There, yeah. Right, so that's the story there, really is in the stand. You just pause it. The middle of the pot, you see the bulgy bit? That's the Taurus field. Yeah. And the, the rim at the top represents Adam's halo, and the rim at the bottom represents Abe's halo. That's what makes the pot. 
And and why on, did the, you... on, on the two handles uh, uh, represent spirals or the snake. Can I ask you why you are these just supposed to be stars, or is there a reason you chose these four pointed? Images. They're the they're the stars that come with that configuration of constellations. So, you know, it's a most it would probably reference three three parts. You know, the three stars is three parts that playing a major part in this configuration. Which yeah, the, in this case, you know, is the Taurus field, Adam and Eve. <laughs> so this the, these these all, all these three of them operate in that. These shaped stars that you have here yeah, are five there, isn't there? Yeah, they Six. are a design that's very common in mid-century modern architecture on concrete masonry blocks. Mm -hmm. I refer to them as the the inverse of what I call the quatrefoil or the four-lobe shape. That is, um, to me, this is a marker. It is, it's part of the symbol of, um, uh, blah, my mind is going blank right now. The um, it's though it's the it's a certain mason. It's the uh, Knights Templar. Yeah. Right, like it's the they, they have this sort of four lobe shape that their cross is the negative space from, and I have found that like this is symbolic of when you see this. This is a place where a reality can be created using this energy field that we're talking about. Like that's what the symbol really represents, in my opinion. Yeah. It's like mm -hmm. the ability to connect the realm, connect the what's below to what's above, right? Like the sort of expanse of the realm. It's interesting you chose those four stars. Like those and if you look at the configuration of the stars, they, they represent a fission reactor. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. It's not yeah, it's not compressing, it's expanding. But yeah, that's I mean, it's then one version, the inverse would be the fission, and the yeah. actual the, the way the shape normally looks, not the inverse of it, would be the fusion. So it's the same the same thing does the process. It's just one is the pressing together and one is the pulling apart, and it's a daisy chain, right? And you often see these concrete masonry blocks, long lines of them, right? So a daisy chain, fission, yeah. fusion, fission, fusion, you know what I mean? Expand, contract, expand. That's out. funny, that, isn't it? Because uh, I yeah. decoded that and I knew, I knew nothing about those blocks you're speaking of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're literally called concrete masonry blocks. <laughs> I don't see that. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, that was a three-minute decode of some very important information. But you can see it there now, can't you? You've got that, that vase. It, there's two halos, a torus field, and spirals there that create that shape. That's your, that's your pot of gold. Can it's you a tell me... It's a torus field. Can you tell me about this pump you're talking about? Tell me about right, the, the pump. The pump is Adam and Eve. You know, Eve's pressure wave rises. Adam's is pressing down. You know, under... I think uh, Freddie Mercury from Queen knew, you know, his song, Under Pressure. Yeah, we're, we're under. Oh, I think Freddie pressure. Mercury knew a lot of stuff. Freddie Mercury and David Bowie know just about everything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a great I mean, song. I, it's a great I, song, and know, he's I a fascinating they, person. Yeah, you know, I think these are probably sons and daughters of uh, globalists. Yeah, I don't think you get to be famous unless you play a ball with them or you're related to them in some way. Well, Freddie Mercury is fascinating because he's Zoroastrian. His father is from Zanzibar. Yeah, right. And if you look into Zoroastrianism. That's quite interesting, right? And just his uh, his range, his frequency range with the way he could sing. I mean, he definitely had some kind of particle oh, acceleration. Amazing, or amazing <laughs> voice, wasn't it? Yeah, you um, can't replace that voice. All right, so let me let me this is let me let me take you into weird Emily world, right? So mm -hmm. this pump that you speak of, and I was looking at some of those drawings and images that you used, so. If people go back to some of the glass bead games Michael and I did about two years ago, I kept insisting to him in, in, in a couple of, of shows that I would have these visions. I have this vision every time I do mushrooms, right? From the very first time I ever did it till I've never had a, a trip where, where at some point I don't see this, right? And what it is, like... what in the psychedelic experience, like it's not uncommon to see eyes everywhere, right? If you go look at like Alex Gray paintings, it's just like the whole reality is made up of eyes. That is not what I'm talking about. At some point during every every trip, I make connection with one specific eye, right? It like waits till it has my attention and it looks me right in the eye. And I've gone 
back and forth about what this is. Is it just me watching myself? Is this, am I connecting with the eye of God? I have found characters in movies like Clockwork Orange and Metamorphosis, where there are specific images in the movie that that look exactly like this eye. But I, I got a vision of like, that was a little bit more of this person, right? Uh-huh. And I only ever see one eye. And it's because the other eye is looking into some sort of some sort of like window into a pressure chamber on what looks like some kind of water pump. He's in some type of water treatment facility or some type of boat where like, you know, it has like the sort of circular window and metal. And he's looking into that with one eye and then the other eye, he's looking at me and he can see that I see him. Right. (laughs) It's fucking every fucking time FPV. I'm not kidding. At some point, like I can be off in some really. It's total- like it's separate. like so it's like someone saying, "Look, look at this, isn't it?" Right, like it, it's like somebody showing me that, yeah. right? That, like <laughs> that, that it's it's it, it's every single time. Um, and so when you're talking about these uh, this pump and the, these wells and whatnot, like it's almost as if something is trying to show me that at some point you will need to know where this is. So right, so let's, me, get, yeah, let's, get it back, let's get back to the rainbows because in scriptures it tells you, you know, you won't see the rainbows for a year. What this means is during this reset, all these angels are going to shut down. So life's going to be uncomfortable for a bit. Your rivers are all going to run dry. They're busy decimating the food chain already and you know, you, you, your beaches and uh, rivers are now being contaminated with uh, untreated waste. Whether you know it or not, it's taking place. It's been going on for about 10 years. So, they're, you know, they're going to make life difficult for when this happens. So uh, I think an important thing of this Operation Rainbow Warrior, you need to know where these wells are going to start pumping again, where you're going to get your water from, your fresh water. So it pays, you know, to know where your local angels are and where the outlets are for this water. You know, your, your local streams you know, from source to sea, it starts somewhere and they all join together to make rivers. That's why there's always a constant flow of water because they're always running. Do people not wonder where all this water comes from? <laughs> but, you know, this is what's going to happen. They're going to shut down. There's going to be no water flowing. Your rivers are going to run dry. Your food sources are going to run dry. It's going to be, you, you can imagine what it's going to look like, can't you? So let me ask you a question. Is this, when they shut off, is this a natural part of the cycle or is this going to be the fucktards turning something off? Girl, brilliant question. You're the, you're, the, you're the only person that's asking the right questions. Because, you know, I thought that for a while. Did it always work like this? Or is it since man's got down there and started pressing buttons? Okay. Because it's easy to do, isn't it, If once you know how it works? You right. can figure out how this works. You know, you control the weather, you control the world. You control well, this. Maybe that's what I'm even world. seeing. Maybe I'm seeing somebody down there pushing buttons he's not supposed to be pushing. Yeah. Well, you know, I've had, I've had a, a similar dream where the, there was a button in it and there was someone wanting to press it, someone tell, screaming at them not to, and there was an angry crowd outside, which I don't know side they were on. And I was like, they were all looking at me. So I've, it was my decision to press the button or not. Right. <laughs> that's weird you know what's going on here i mean it's just like a dream i would imagine but it's very vivid and, uh, and very real and i thought you know that's what made me think is is it man pressing these buttons you know remember that schwarzenegger film where he's on mars and you have to press this button to for the air to start working right because you, you said this, you said something about cleaning the system and so like i i, I can can you explain what you mean by cleaning the system a cleaning cycle after after they've been running, it seems they dump the water or whatever's you know obviously water's been uh, u- utilized in them, right? And then it has to you know dump that and re- replenish it with fresh water. So when I'm, it, I'm, I'm pretty sure they use sea water and it gets you know the process converts it into fresh water. So th- so this would be like, like the desalination plant type of thing. Yeah, yes, yeah. so desalination will take place with this technology. And okay. Once again, you know the outlet is. Pure fresh water. Well, that's that's your true holy water. What's coming out on Nord Three? And so is this okay? So the the like here in Austin, right? Uh, very close to the area that I say 
there that I'm 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 going to go out on the limb and say I'm 97.3% sure there's a giant angel here an eve right and then there's a bunch of little atoms right um yeah. but mm-hmm. there's a uh, underneath the ground there's something called edward's aquifer and then uh, there's right. a natural yeah. pool here called barton springs yeah right and to look sound familiar isn't it right and from barton springs if you're at barton springs it is a straight shot to view the area that i call the blast zone which is where there is a power plant on top of a limestone creek bed there's also really hard to find but you can spot it if you know what you're looking for a small tesla tower there and Elon Musk lives in the penthouse of an apartment that overlooks that that exact spot, right? Mm, yeah. and, and so whatever, is, there's something going on there energetically that these people want to be near, right? It's creating some sort of uh, energetic field that they find desirable. But just a lit- few hundred, like depending on if you went straight or if you drove around or whatever, Quarter mile, half mile from that spot is Barton Springs, which is one of the most famous, clear, totally clear, clean water, cold water, natural springs, right? Like the lake is filthy, but the spring is perfectly clear. You have never seen natural water this clear. Like it's, it's amazing. So yeah, would imagine. this be <laughs> this would this be one of these types of locations that you're looking for as for what sacred sacred water? Yeah, yeah, sacred wells, uh, springs, anything like that is going to be connected to the output of this technology, the outlet of it. There's also um, an area that I'm just f- found. No, out the, the 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 name the name you mentioned and the locations and the name the name you know the names of them that tells me you know you're onto it already. You know it's there. There's also an These area. People know it's there. <laughs> there's also an area that I just became um, aware of here in Austin called Scottish Woods, right? So like Scottish Rite Freemasons or something like that, right? Yeah. And there's these this really interesting. Uh, it also is connected to Barton Creek, right? But they have. Let me see if I can find the picture I'm thinking of. They have something there called Sculpture Falls that's inside the Scottish woods, right? And this is what it looks like. So this would be one of those locations as well, yes? Yeah. Okay. All right, so. Yes, you know, there's someone's sculpture. There's obviously someone of importance or uh, deserving of recognition there by the look of it. Yeah. But, you know, where's the water coming from? That's that's the question. It's all coming from somewhere. And, you know, you go back to source, it's these that's outputting it. Well, it's coming like the If you look at Edwards Aquifer, it's like one of the um, it's it's a it's an underground water source. I think like yeah. I have a well, lot of, that, you know, it's that it's that it's that that causes the precipitation process, the process of the angels, the aquifer. You know, you've got dew going up into the air. This is how Eve works. Yeah. So there's it's a, part of it. There's a <laughs> by, lot by of des- I think by design, you know, it's been built like that below. We just can't tell it's been built. Uh, you know, but you look at sacred geometry again, our glyphs, and they, you know, they show you the underworld in layers. Well, they all yeah, it, it all looks like technology that you would find in 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 near near particle accelerators, near fusion reactors, near water treatment facilities, near power plants, right? Yeah. That's what all the geometry looks like. Yeah, oh there, yeah. There is a um, something going on both here in Austin and several other cities in the United States that are positioned on rivers in the same way that Austin is, that they are not really reporting on. And then there's like sort of an underground movement of people who are thinking that this is uh, serial killers, right? Mm-hmm. But they're all on rivers that i have noticed so like when i look at the layout of town around austin the streets and i don't mean like mm, a first street second street third street or all the streets that are named maple oak elm i mean odd more unusually named streets located in unusual parts of town Like I can go to these same cities where people are going missing and find like the same exact layout of similar kinds of streets. Right. 
it's like there's like a template for some of these cities and apparently people are going missing. And then there's this idea that there's this serial killer idea, but there's this scenario of are they going missing in the river? Now, one of the things I noticed when I moved back to Austin in 2021 was how many people go missing in the river and they don't look for them. So there's this story about you're not supposed to go in the river because there's some weird kind of like algae in it, right? But if you dig into that a little bit, you find out that's like a wives' tale. That's not true, but it's fine that people yeah, think that yeah, it keeps, good in. Yeah. keeps them out of the water. And then you'll find the next layer is, oh, there's a very strong undertow. So they don't want people going in the water. And you dig around a little bit and that isn't really true either. And from what I can tell, this is just Emily's opinion. This is not fact. I think the the river is either far deeper than anybody imagines or there's something else down there that they don't want people to know about. But people go missing in the river and they don't look for them, FPV. They mm. don't do... They, there was a, a plane that crashed into the river while I was exercising one day. Then they were saying it was like a Bermuda Triangle thing. It got all disoriented and crashed. I watched it happen, right? It was the craziest thing. So there's something energetically going on. But I've questioned whether there are pyramids down there. If what what's really under Austin is some kind of like underground inland ocean based on certain things that I've looked into. But it also seems like, like I've had occasion, like I met this guy on the trail one day who had come out of the water and he was completely disoriented, right? And it yeah. seemed like he didn't understand, like whatever version of Austin we were in looked almost like the one he was from, but not exactly. And so- he would recognize certain things, but then other things that were supposed to be there weren't. And he walked around the lake with us for about an hour. It was one of the strangest experiences I've ever had, right? Um, mm -hmm. Like I, I have looked at a bunch of sort of ancient mythologies. There's a lot of strange things about rivers. And then of course there's like the Goro Adachi time rivers scenario, right? <clears throat> Like, I, you know, and the fact that like a lot of these halos, rainbows, angels are situated around rivers. And what we're talking about here is like compression or co sort of uh, compression and expansion. Like, what do you think this does to reality? Do you think this can create some kinds of like distorted temporal and dimensional fields where things that people might want to count as like paranormal or like where coming up with a cover story of a serial killer sounds like a good idea because it's easier than explaining what's really happening to people. Do you, do you think that this kind of stuff goes on around these locations based on like energy fields being, being generated or is it just simply like part of the chaos of whoever's trying to control this stuff um, that it creates like almost like cartel like behavior around the locations. Yeah, it would be cartel like behavior. It would be well guarded. You know, they won't want yeah. people poking around. And you know, don't be surprised if there's like underground bases there. You know, there probably already is, and yeah, and probably elevators down to it from certain people's houses. <laughs> I'm a hundred percent certain of that. Yes. Yeah, you know, so yeah. they they won't want people poking around, and maybe you do see some strange things taking place around these areas. I would imagine so. You know, once you find one and you study it. You know, you look at his rainbow, you start watching the weather patterns. What you know, what else can we discover? You know, that, that's taken place that we haven't seen yet. Yeah, has, you know, there has to be more things happening that we can now relate to this technology and how it operates. I think so what people, you know, people might come across things like that, or or even secret entrances to somewhere who knows, or they See, maybe got equipment with them that they don't want to, you know, you're not bringing that here because that's going to detect something. Secret I mean, it's entrances, hard to say, for sure. isn't it? You know, it's it's hard. It's a hard one to answer because it, it, without someone surviving it, you know, are they being chased away by someone or murdered? You know, to keep more people away, or there's a murderer, don't go there, and you know, that scares people off from going there, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, it's like saying that there's a radiation leak 
there, people will stay away then. And yeah, just, yeah, yeah. I, I, I debunked that one uh, a long time ago. The, the other thing that I track a lot in, in, in relation to these locations is uh, graffiti. Uh, I think you can learn quite a bit from the graffiti uh, around some of these areas, both the beautiful, well-organized murals, but also some of the tags that look like they might be like simply taggers or gang, gang related. There's yeah. a method to the madness. There's a code amongst some of it because like I'll have an area that I figure out is a, is an unusual spot energetically or because of coordinates and things that I can see from that spot or just anomalous things going on. And like very shortly after, like one of the taggers that I will keep my eye on will come tag that spot. Right. Almost like mm-hmm. they have recognized it as well. Yeah. Right. So that's one of the things that I, that I pay attention to is, um is the, 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 the graffiti, both the uh, well-executed one and the, the junky stuff. They both have sort of a, almost like an inventory, right. That you can kind of. Yeah. Oh, it's have. like the street code there that you can use, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't be surprised. They, they've got uh, secret codes and you know glyphs and things they can use, and they'll know what it represents. You know, you could probably decode parts of it yourself over time, and are learning from our research how to decode it into something else. But it, it will, you know, it always relate to the same processes, or you know, there could be signs just for you know the ones that know. You know, this this yeah. is what this place is, and don't come here unless it's to do with this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, there's a, a complete different language there going on, isn't it? And they understand it, and we're decoding it and breaking it down and revealing it to you people, really. I mean, you know, we're just sharing what we decode with you and the people of the world. <laughs> yeah. All right, FPV, we've been going for a little over two hours. I think this is a good place to wrap for this time. Um, I, I look forward to seeing uh seeing it once you've done your magic <laughs> with the visuals is there yeah, anything I'll, I'll, else you wanted to say before we wrap it up i'll try and use the right visuals this time as well because last time i just put you know graphics of ours all over it when i could have put um the, the subjects we talked about I should have used the images you used so i'll try and do it a bit better listen but you know listen back to it and add in the, the correct imagery for the conversation if we're missing any <laughs> That would be awesome. Well, like the one I was trying to find, you know, I've got to find that image now with all that animation. So you yeah, well, what, what, what you did last time was beautiful. I mean, people really appreciated it. It, you know, like yeah. it, it, it was a, the, between the visuals and our conversation, it kind of was one big digestible pill that people could take and get an understanding. So I think yeah. people appreciated it and we've built on it here today. Um, I, I, I really uh, can't say, uh, tell you enough how much i appreciate and respect all of you guys who work on this and 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 what you put out and and the way you do it and maybe one day when when i get to the end of my life i'll finally understand it all and you guys will have made a very large contribution to that so thank you i look forward to doing this again my friend tell people where they can find you how they can support you all of that stuff yeah, you know, you can find my channel. It's uh, FPV Angel on YouTube. I do have a bit YouTube channel, but I don't use it because I've got a downscale of videos to a very low quality, and half the time they don't process, so I give up on that site. <laughs> yep. So just uh, just on YouTube, um, we do have a Facebook, but it doesn't get maintained because the, the, you know, the team is busy, and the more forums you got, the more busy you get. Uh, we do have a Discord server. You can find the link to that in my stream. Just type in Discord, and it will give you a link. And you can join in with projects there, you know, not just the Rainbow Projects, but other projects that we cover as well. Rainbow Warriors is just one project of many that we do. So, yeah, start mapping your rainbows, people. They're very important, very serious, very real, and very now this. And the more people get talking about it, maybe we've got a short window where we can make change in the future. And this is how it starts. We've got to get this information out. Yeah, well... Kermit the Frog had it right. Someday we'll find it. The Rainbow Connection. <laughs> the Love <laughs> Dreamers and FPV. There we go. <laughs> All right. Th- that'll wrap it up for us, guys. Thanks for listening, and we will see you next time. FPV, my friend, I look forward to doing with this uh, again. Say hello to the whole crew for me. 
And uh, I will get this over. I'm going to give uh, just the, the us here talking uh, a sneak peek to my my uh, patrons, and I'll I'll get this over to you. And and then once we have the completed uh, package, we can just put it out on on our YouTubes and get as many people as we can involved. And and yeah. uh, and hopefully we can uh, start moving a little quicker with this. <laughs> yeah, you know that, that's that's my question. Who do we speak to about this? Right. You know, I, we can make we can make videos forever, but we need to be talking to the right people now. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I think it's. Uh, it, it, do we do we land surveyors, architects? Uh, you know, like how do you? This is not your typical community outreach project. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's right? something unique and very special. It's unique and very special, and it's it's uh, it's it, it it's not. I don't think it's something everyone can or wants to understand but forever for whoever does it like like you said it is our birthright to know who it we is, are yeah. what we are where we come from and how it works yeah and what yeah. we're standing upon <laughs> what we're standing upon all right yeah. my friend thank you so much everybody thank we'll you, catch Emily. you next time